The next topic we're going to discuss, and trust me, I am so sick of this topic, but we have to discuss what the people are talking about. That's just what it is. Ryan Garcia's ex-wife accused him of using shrooms after their altercation. All right, man, uh, Trill Dollar Bill, strap on, man, because we're talking about Ryan Garcia, and, you know, he does a lot of things. Yeah. (laughs) So the caption reads, when she got caught cheating and broke the baby's bottle. So this is from one of Ryan's social media accounts. It's, It's either a story on Instagram or Snapchat harassed me and you caused me to have a mental breakdown so she just said he caused her to have a mental breakdown the caption that ryan wrote said i caused a mental breakdown after getting caught laughing emojis then he said now he's a friend lol this is what happens when you get caught do we what look at her look at her doing what bro we got the messages george said you were a girl that you got bored with I had no, a friend. You look He's a stupid. fucking friend. You guys are gay as fuck. Look at He's gay. No one fuck that fucking guy. So I don't care. That's you guys cool. are fucking gay. The day sucking each other's dick. He's talking shit about his brother, mother of his child, and this motherfucker's. A- so Ryan said, like, we got messages. I don't know if you can hear that or whatever, but so he's basically saying she got caught cheating, although she is his ex-wife. <laughs> That's how, <laughs> right. I don't know how that works. But, uh, <laughs> all right. So now we're going to move on to uh, some something that uh, she posted. Um, all right, hold on a second because these things go by fast. Let me make it big. All right, so we're going to do this in slow mo. So here's what his ex wife wrote. She wrote, After I blocked him from his original number because he was calling me names, I decided I was just going to move forward with the lawyers handling visitation since he can't handle being nice and stop harassing me. Ryan needs to focus on getting sober. I do not want anyone who is always under the influence around my children and causing harm and destroying our home physically has destroyed all of our TVs and has broken everything in my house because he acts like a child. All right. So now some text messages were revealed so i'm going to uh, read the text messages to you now apparently this is ryan uh so this is ryan's portion of the text message he said it's 10 now or what time is it all my problems come from you always have i'm for the most part sober you caused me so much stress it made me drink just please let me see my kids she responded yeah, you can on a schedule now. No more abusing us and showing up when you please and breaking our home. It's time to have boundaries. Ryan responded, breaking your home, it's my home, but okay. She responded, our home, I said. Ryan responded, yes, I really need them without you there. She responded, you have destroyed a lot and leave shrooms everywhere you were not safe and i want you to get help he responded we can point fingers all day so that was that so uh it continues and then it shows ryan attempting to uh facetime his ex-wife and calling her several times as you can see She said, when Ryan is done partying and wants to be a father, this is how he reacts if I don't answer within minutes. So you see all the missed calls and everything. And so we'll let it go on. And so the caption says, I'm supposed to co-parent under this circumstances. And then here's what it says. This is apparently Ryan tweeting his ex-wife, allegedly, according to what she's saying. I'm going to go crazy. Hello. B word. I hate you. B word. I slid 14K. You are a, you know, W word. Let's F and go. I know you at Miami. You got me F'd up. I'm going to F you up. I'm going to find you. F yourself. Hello. Hello. So that's apparently uh, what Ryan uh, text her. 
or allegedly, I should say. And so here's the damage that he allegedly did to the house. All right, so boom. Then she's showing the damage and she wrote, slandering my name when I've been nothing but forgiven. If you love and support Ryan, you would encourage him to get help. Enough is enough. This man is not stable and it's clear he is struggling. All right. And I think oh, this is the last image. Oh, no. One more. So as you can see, more damage. She said, so now that I've been super patient and have tried to get him help myself since everything I did failed i now put my foot down and decided that he will need to see his children with supervision and through the lawyers because i cannot mentally keep up with this anymore so that's what she stated now after this incident ryan garcia issued the classic ryan garcia apology which includes, I'm sorry, but it wasn't really my fault and I'm going to rehab. All right, let's take a look at the Ryan Garcia special. The apology after. Here we go. I came on here just to express uh, my actions for the last couple of months. And I'm sorry for how long it took for me to make this video. Uh, I woke up the next morning regretting everything I did and everything I said about Andre. And uh, I came on here just to say, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Andrea, you're the mother of my children and somebody that I will always have love and respect for. You, you, you grew up me and you see me at my best and now you see me at my worst. So, uh, Andrea and everybody knows I have a lot going on right now but I finally decided to get some help. I lost everything in the past couple of weeks, my boxing career and just so much other things. And I hurt Andrea, I hurt you. And uh, I hurt our kids. I hurt everybody around me for my actions. And uh, I'm just, I'm sorry. Cause I know our kids are gonna watch these when they get older. And, uh, and I'm so sorry, I mean, I lost everything, you know, I lost, I lost the one thing I ever loved. And I knew, and who knew, the, who knew me the most, Andrea knows me the most. And uh, I'm sorry, Andrea, I, I feel bad. I retract all my statements about her. She never sold money from me. She never did anything wrong by me. She never cheated on me. We weren't together, so right there she's not a cheater she's a great woman uh but you know saying that uh i finally decided to get some help i'm going to rehab and in the next couple of months uh you're gonna see a change you're gonna see a change uh, i gotta handle some things but after that yeah i'm going uh i'm going to check myself into rehab and get better and uh, hopefully i can return to boxing and co-parenting with the two of the most important people in my life you know, Drea, Henry, and Bella, I love you guys so much. Again, Andre, I'm so sorry from the bottom of my heart. I love you. Uh, I love you so much. And uh, can't wait to see you again. Well, Ryan said he was going to change things. He was going to rehab. But... A few moments later, <laughs> <laughs> this is Ryan. <laughs> oh boy. Retweet if you think Eminem is gay. <laughs> so now Ryan is on to the next one. Um, now we we've seen him get into it with Kayla Plant, several people, uh, Ishe Smith, and so now he's into it with Eminem, I guess. So. Here's what he tweeted, Feminem, with a picture of Eminem dressed in women's clothing. I'm. This is the AI era. I don't know how real that picture is. I don't recall seeing it back in the days, and quite frankly, I really couldn't care less if it's real or not. It's nothing to do with me. What people do with their bodies is none of my business. All right. Um, yeah, I think I showed that one. I think this is the last one. If it isn't. Oh, yeah. So then he said, wait. Eminem is a 
H to the Izzo, and I won't go any further, but it's a slur. Um, so that's what he tweeted. All right, show out Bill. Very long to set up, but now it is your turn to let us know what you think about this whole thing. Actions and how you feel about it. Just go ahead. <laughs> uh, Ryan, 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 Ryan. Ryan was saying the N word. Now he's messing with the white boys. Ryan, you better stop it. Uh, <laughs> my brother Katie said something that was hilarious. Well, during the break, he said, uh, Ryan's going at everybody. He's not, <laughs> he doesn't care who he offends. He's going at everybody. Um, on a serious note here, Ryan, um, I was seeing the situation that you was going through, and I'm not going to come at you on a messed up type of way, right? Uh, but I will tell you this, saying you sorry doesn't mean anything, <laughs> you know, um, you have to show them and I'm speaking from experience here, yo, everything that you do did and everything you did, I have done, I'm not sitting here pretending that I'm holier than that. It was a time in my life that I was very toxic in my actions and my behaviors. You know, um, I apologize. But not only did I apologize, I seek help. And I changed with my actions to the point where people actually noticed. And I didn't have to say that I changed. They actually seen it. And they was telling me. Um, so I'm not going to get on you on your relationship situation because I haven't been the best guy in relationships. You know? One of the biggest things that I apologize to my kids is me uh, having a, being a player, multiple relationships, multiple women, having uh, children out of wedlock, you know, having creating multiple homes, you know. Uh, while I was going through what I was going through, I was being selfish, right? So one of my biggest regrets was not being able to give my kids the time because everybody knows I love my children. But sometimes I miss out on things, you know? And I see a lot of things that you're doing. And uh, it's like as a calls to scream for help. And you did say some things that were sincere about you losing your your job with boxing and everything else that went along with that money situations. I get it because I went through the same situation. Me losing a lot of things, you know, uh, financial with, with health. I had a stroke. It was like a lot of things going on and, and I became bitter. So Ryan, I understand that. And then you start taking it out on the ones that's close to you. You know, the ones that's that's there, your loved ones, you know, uh, you stop being who you normally was. The, the outgoing person that you once was, you know, so, um, yeah, Ryan, I do think you should seek help. But most importantly, instead of seeking help and saying that you're, you're sorry, you have to really do the work. Right. And you have to show them. You have to show them that you're sorry. You know what I'm saying? Not just say it because I'm just, you say, oh, people have been waiting for you to apologize. You've been apologizing. See, like everything that comes out, you do say I have something sorry. But then you go on to something else. Like you give this big apology. You did your ditty apology when you sit in front of the camera 
and you say, oh, I'm, I apologize or this, and then you go and attack Eminem. <laughs> How sorry are you? You know, like I could have went and told people, oh, I'm sorry, told, told my children, I'm sorry, and then never once changed my behavior. Now, I have my children, all they want to do is be around their dad. I went and I seek help. I did the work. I, I sat there. I had people in my corner, my support system, my brother Kane in here backing me. I had the, the, the support and love from him. You know, I got everything in order. Found a better, instead of being bitter, found a, a new belief in, in, in found a respect in, uh, for myself. And I was able to show change instead of saying that I changed. So instead of preaching, Brian, all I'm, I'm sorry, I just went on a rant. Um, Ryan, I see there's a lot going on with you. You definitely need to speak to somebody. You definitely need to leave the drugs alone. And you do the work. People will see. keep saying you're uh, you're sorry, and then do it. People are gonna it's not gonna be a good look. That's all I gotta say. All right, so what I appreciate, like you, you like to share like a lot of yourself, uh, and so I do feel like though there's a part of you that's always extremely lenient towards certain behaviors because of your past, and so you kind of feel like, who am I to judge? I'm not perfect, right? So the reason why I'm bringing that up is because I saw like some. Not a lot of people, but, you know, some people make certain type of comments when you were you didn't really want to label Ryan as a as a racist mm. for his comments. And you were just kind of lenient on it. Well, I just flat out came out and said, I can't <laughs> it, right. That's part of how you are because of your past. Like my life was different in terms of like how I decisions I made and, and everything. So like. I come with the clip loaded, ready to fire because yeah, like, yeah, my yeah. perspective is like, yo, <laughs> you know me though. Like I keep it real all the time. Like I don't, I don't feel sorry for anyone and I don't want anyone feeling sorry for themselves. So like for me, it's all about if I don't hold you accountable and I don't tell you the truth, then who else will? And like, I had to be accountable with myself too. Like, so I think, number one accountability starts with looking in the mirror so you okay. shared like a lot of things but you know like you brought up your situation when you had uh the stroke right but i watched you change the way you eat i watched you change your workout habits and i know how hard it was i i know like the beginning where like you struggled to lift certain weight yeah. and then watch you transform how you struggle to run certain distances and then you transform so you put the effort in but i also watch you put the effort in with changing the way you reacted to things like when things didn't go your way or whenever conflict resolution there was a way you would react to conflict you put the work in to change the way you react to conflict to understand different sides to do all these things so for me it's like i get the fact that when you see someone like Ryan Garcia, you want to give them the benefit of the doubt. Even Adrian Broner, I feel like you always want to give him the benefit of the doubt. But you have to understand that there's a certain point where you have to take accountability and look for people who are going to help you get through that. And I feel like Ryan hasn't reached that point yet. He still surrounds himself with people who are using him and who would allow him to make bad decisions like going into the house and trashing it. Real, you, you know me. I've never been around you where I encourage you to do something dumb like that. I wouldn't stand beside you where you were going to do something dumb like that. And I wouldn't tell you that it's cool. I wouldn't be around you telling you it's cool to say a slur about another community and encourage you to go say it. Right. And you said this before that you realize in order for you to grow, you had to cut off a lot of the people you were normally hanging around. And then now that you've changed and you've elevated, you realize like, I can't hang around. Old, I, I shouldn't have been hanging around these people. Like, that's just real. Like, that's what maturing is. is. That's what growing is. I think about Clarissa Shields when her brother got out of jail and she brought him to a press conference and he ended up hitting uh, Brashear, Ali Brashear. 
Like, you can't bring that dude around. If he thinks that a boxing press conference is like a street beef, and you could just put hands on a trainer of the other of your opponent who's supposed to believe in his fighter by the or, or his fighter by the way, you know. So, yeah, bro, I I I just want to point that out because I think like you know sometimes I know like how you look at it, and I understand your perspective, but I also think like you have to understand that what you did is unique, rare, and difficult because you see not everyone can do it. You were willing to. You wanted to change. And I do remember because, like, there would be times where you were along your journey and, like, people would try to suck you in and wrap you into the old stuff, like, get you to go back. And you would be frustrated, and I would be like, the only way you're going to know your change is when you don't go back, when you don't fight back, when you don't get sucked in, where you don't feel the need to retaliate when someone strikes you with stuff that normally would bother you. And I remember like once you started and you were just laughing, you were like, bro, now it's just funny to me. Everything, <laughs> like, you know, but Ryan has to do that for himself. So now that we got that out the way, and by the way, I'm very proud of you. Now let me talk about Ryan. Yeah, cook Ryan. You can cook Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Let me talk about Ryan for a second. <laughs> Ryan hasn't made any steps towards changing. So Ryan had the situation with Devin. He's had all these situations, and each time he says he's going to be a better person, and then he turns around and does something else, which to me is showing that he's not fully committed to changing, and he just thinks that he can somehow manipulate the public. Now, for example, what did he say when he said he wanted to bring George Floyd back and kill him again? He said he was trying to bring awareness to black on black crime. Now, I looked this up. It said that his ex-wife is of Mexican descent. So, Ryan, when you went in and you trashed everything, right, was that Mexican on Mexican crime? There was a famous assassination attempt that's known globally yesterday do you call that white on white crime see this is what i'm talking about you see the narratives it's very interesting we can talk about andy ruiz and what he did to his wife do you call that mexican or mexican crime right this is my thing with ryan he's just saying things to infuriate communities he's just saying things to be disrespectful after he trashes the house with his ex-wife who says our home he says it's my house right <laughs> then oh i love you i can't wait to see the kids like is it really that you That's love it. her are you trying to do damage control because you realize now that lawyers someone should have told you Posting this to social media looks very bad for you, Ryan. You are a professional boxer. You knock people out for a living and you just bullied this girl on camera. You're lucky she doesn't say you hit her, bro. And you destroyed the house with the yeah. kids on it, bro. You destroyed the house. You did and all you this. You literally posted she cheated on you when she's your ex-wife. You the one who filed for the divorce. I remember you announcing it. Bro, what are you doing? So you continue to make bad decision after bad decision, and no one around you is attempting to stop you. Like, I can't judge. I really can't. But Trill is one thing. Even, even, even when you would react certain ways or you would do certain things you never encouraged me to do them. never once never once like i remember when, we were young, when i was younger i never smoked a drink and i remember being around dudes and everyone smoking and drinking or whatever and they would pass me like when they didn't know me like someone who was who just vibing with me for the, they would attempt to pass me the the blunt and i'd be like i'm good and they would try to clown me. And of course, if you know me, you know I really I'm I'm gonna come back at you. Like, so it is what it is. 
but it would always end with Trill being like, he ain't got to smoke. Like, get off of, like, why you, what you want him to smoke for? He don't got to smoke. He don't got to drink. You know what I'm saying? Like, you would always have my back in that. When dudes try to clown me for going to school, like, you also knew, like, how I got down outside of school. <laughs> but you, you'd always be like, what's wrong with him going to school? Like, why, what you, what you want him to be? You know what I'm saying? Like, you never promoted BS. Like, that's what I mean about, like, it's different. Like, yeah, like you got your history, bro, but you never promoted the stuff Ryan's doing. You never would encourage the stuff Ryan's. You never did that stuff, bro. It was never you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember I, I could just live because I was like, if people try to hate on me, you would always, you know what I mean? Like, come on now. So, Ryan, I don't understand how he could be around people who promote this. I don't know how he could promote this. But listen to what he said. Ryan, think about what you said. Since you've been around these people and doing what you've been doing, let's talk about your losses, bro. You lost your victory over Devin Haney. That's what made you popular in the first place. That Yo, everyone was rocking. with After you beat Devin, it was like folklore. You became a hero. You pulled off the upset, everything. Even with the positive test, science said it was contamination. So you still have people willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. Because science said your positive test test was most likely contamination. So people were like, yo, we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt on this because the science says this trace amount, him testing clean on this date, and now these this trace amount. So will I, I run it back? People are giving you the benefit of doubt. Then you go do say the, say the N-word, disrespect Muslims, disrespect the black community. The WBC expels you. Now you can't fight for the WBC title. Other organizations may follow suit. You're suspended from boxing. You can't fight, right? You lost money because you had to pay millions of dollars in a fine. Now your ex-wife is saying that she is going to the court and requesting supervised visitation. Now you lost the ability to be around your kids without someone else watching you. Think about that, bro. You can't be around your kids unless someone is there watching you. How much more do you want to lose is the real question. Because at this point, I'm not here to tell anyone how to live life, but you got to look at everything your actions are causing you. So again, we'll just run it down. Your victory over Devin Haney, suspension from boxing, expelled by the WBC. You lost money that you had to pay. Even, even, even before you tested positive, you not being disciplined, you had to pay Devin Haney money because you couldn't make weight. Then after, you had to pay a fine, right? And now we're talking about visitation. You cannot see your kids without someone else being present because they're saying that you're not responsible. And I'll just close by saying this. I don't know how true it is, but she's a legend. You leave shrooms everywhere. There's this one case I know of where um, there was a younger kid and an older brother and the older brother had edibles. The older brother had edibles, teenage brother, younger kid, like eight years old, Younger kids stumbled upon the edibles and thought it was just regular gummies and killed the whole stash. And the young kid almost died. So they saved the young kid. Mom had no idea teenage son had edibles. But do you think that mattered to the Department of Children and Families? No. They took the young kid. The teenage kid was almost a grown up, but the young kids ate. So, Ryan, we talking about shrooms lying around? If edibles almost killed a young kid, what do you think shrooms would do, fam? This is some deep stuff you got to think about. This isn't even people trying to come at you. This isn't even people trying to attack you, bro. This is just real stuff. What is going to be enough to get you to seek the real help that you need? I don't take no pride in seeing any of this because I feel bad for Ryan because I think he's a talented kid. 
I don't know if it's brain trauma. I don't know what it is. But something needs to be done because this dude is spiraling and it doesn't seem to be changing anytime soon. But anyway, it does turn out to be, you know, a pretty deep segment, I feel like. Uh, let us know what you think. In- <laughs> You go ahead, bro. You can take us. No, no, no. Please like and subscribe. Let us know how you feel in the comment section. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter. And please check out our podcast on all major streaming services. It's Dr. Trill and Dr. Caden. <laughs> Call us, Ryan. <laughs> Call at us, Ryan. We got you. We put you on a plan to recovery. And we're the boxing bros. <laughs>